What's up, y'all? My name is Manny Mendoza. I'm the chef by trade, and I got my start cooking with cannabis at the Culinary Institute of America. That's where I started to hone in on my craft and discover my passion for cannabis. Obviously, food was at the forefront of what I love to do, but connecting that and combining it with cannabis was something that I always dreamed of. And that's why I'm here today to talk about how legal cannabis can heal and regenerate our communities because I come from those same communities. That's what made me go into starting Herbal Notes, a culinary cannabis supper club from Chicago to California. I wanted to create a space, a safe space for people to consume cannabis and to come together because food is medicine. And when you introduce music and when you introduce amazing people, you start to create a recipe for an unbeatable, unmatchable experience that starts to form new bonds between those people. And that's why I think it's ever more important with the ongoing legalization and ongoing cannabis reform and it becoming mainstream, that it's more important now more than ever for all of us to become conscious producers and consumers in the cannabis industry. Three pillars that we talk about at our Herbal Notes dinner, dinners is the canatomy, the medicinal and wellness benefits, and our social responsibility. So first I'll go over the canatomy or cannabis anatomy. That's where we like to talk to people about the actual plant because it's imperative for us to destigmatize that plant and to stop demonizing it because it's something that's so interrelated and intertwined with our human history that we have to come back to it. We have to find that connection back into agriculture and understanding that this plant has grown and has, been, has traveled with diasporas of people throughout millennia. We've been consuming cannabis for, as food, as medicine, cultivating it for textiles. That's why it's important for us to become conscious consumers and start to come back to cannabis as something that can be restorative, something that can be used to heal and regenerate our communities, which is what I'm here to talk about today. We've started to see intergenerational trauma start to happen over decades. And a lot has to do with the war on drugs, a specific targeting against black and brown people and native people. And now we see a turnaround where cannabis is coming back into our lives as a commodity. That duty falls on us as consumers to come back and to use cannabis as a force for good. One of the main ways we can use it as a force for good is through our tax dollars. Cannabis consumption, buying cannabis from dispensaries, all these generate so much money in the hundreds of millions of dollars. In Illinois, we have an R3 program, which is designed to bring 25% of our tax dollars back into disinvested communities. This is a great start, this is a great implement, but we need to do more. We need to shift our focus as an industry from one that's profit-driven to one that's driven by reparation and regeneration. Each state needs to recognize its duty to its citizens, especially in particular to its black and Latino and native citizens the people who were caught under the steamroller of a broken industrial prison complex and broken policies that were used to harm one another. This is where my focus starts to take place at all of our dinners, where we introduce these pillars. We talk about the actual plant and we break it down because I'm a chef by heart. I love to cook. So I start to introduce the plant by infusing it, infusing it in all types of ways, from the entire plant, the leaves on the plant, the actual foliage, to breaking down its compounds and components, utilizing its terpenes or aromatic compounds that give us those wonderful flavors and scents of 
Gelato and Blue Dream and OG Kush. These are scents that enhance our mood and put us in a different place, a more positive place. And that's where we should shift our focus as consumers of cannabis. How can we use it almost as if it's therapy? Therapy for the hoods, therapy for our people. Being in Illinois right now, for example, there's, very, there's a handful of operators that own the majority of the stake in the cannabis market. But we have basically zero new operators, new owners that are black, brown, or native when there's zero diversity, there's zero equity, and there's relatively zero money being put back into the communities that were steamrolled by the war on drugs. We have all these barriers against us, but now we have a plant that's been here for thousands of years, really before us, but it's given so much to us and it's given so much to communities of color, of indigenous backgrounds from all over the world. We need to shift that focus back, back to nature, back to the ground that it was cultivated from, because that's where our real heart lies in humanity. This is designed by nature. We were made to receive cannabis. We, were, we even build our own cannabinoids. That's what endocannabinoids mean. They come from within. What we find in the plant world are phytocannabinoids. So it has to be by design that this plant gives so much to us. But now we have a whole new opportunity to use its economic benefits, use it as a way to start to push money and repatriate money back into communities that were targeted by the war on drugs. And we're now coming up on the 50th anniversary of its declaration. Even 50 years before that, cannabis was used to specifically target people of color, specifically Mexicans and black community. That's where we are today, where we can undo that. We can start to form a new common ground, common goal to practice restorative justice through our consumption, through our purchases, through us demanding that we see more diversity and inclusion in the cannabis industry. We want to see more entrepreneurs of color with products on shelves and brands with ownership so that those people can take that money and bring it back to their neighborhoods and bring it back to their communities and step out of an illicit market that perpetuates a broken system. We need to break that cycle. And that's where I want to end my talk by highlighting and focusing on what cannabis can really do for us and who it really needs to help. Everybody has a role to play from the private sector, corporate cannabis, they have an enormous role to play and the public sector and our politicians who write the language for legalization. That policy needs to be in the best interest of the people. The private sector's sales driven goals should be in the best interest of the people. We need to shift from sales driven reasons to goals of reparation and regeneration. Cannabis could do that. Thank you all.